Hello, I'm Marianne Esposito here at Tuscan Market in Salem, New Hampshire, where I'm going to show you and a few of my friends how to make a really nice chicken broth with crepes. Stay tuned. And that's all there is to it. I mean, cooking doesn't have to be complicated. Add the cream. So about a half a cup of heavy cream goes in here. You did a great job, Mary Thank Ellen. you, Mary. With the base of the pan, it's a little rumba action. I've got a relatively right. clean, clean hand to work hand. with. I always say you have to keep that hand clean so you can answer the phone. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao! <laughs> you did well, no, so well! You did really, really well. That was beautiful. I think you should keep that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We are going to make something today that comes from Abruzzo, the region of Abruzzo. And in dialect, it's called scripelle in busse, which translates to crepes in chicken broth. So we're going to start making the crepes first. So in Italian, non-dialect, that would be crespelle. And Italians use crespelle for many different things. They can make them savory. They can make them sweet depending on what they combine with them. So for savory, they would fill them with vegetables or cheese and bake them in the oven. For sweet, they might fill them with ricotta, sweet and ricotta cheese and some confectioner sugar over the top. But today, our crepes are going into broth, which is in Italian class, brodo, right? Brodo. Okay, so let's make them first. So to make the crepes, and you want to make them ahead of time because they need about 30 minutes or so or even better overnight for the batter to sit up. So about a quarter cup of water goes into a, uh, a bowl, or I like to use just a measuring cup because then it's easier to pour it right into the, the crepe pan. So a quarter cup of water, and then you want four eggs. So you put that right in there, and you whisk these up just to get them smooth. And with this you want some flour, about three quarters of a cup, pinch of salt, and that's it. That's going to be the base for the crepes. So we're gonna give this a little bit of salt. Isn't this cute? A little salt in there, about a quarter teaspoon. And you want about three quarters of a cup of just regular unbleached all-purpose flour. So you whisk this in. And then what I do with this is I cover this and I put it in the refrigerator and I let it just kind of sit around, you know what, for about 30 minutes or so or even better overnight. It will change color a little bit, but it does not affect the taste of the crepes. So you get it really, really smooth like that. And then you set that aside. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator so it will get cold. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and then get out my chicken to make our chicken broth. So, for chicken soup, every Italian has a recipe, and so do I. So, some of these things are traditions that I grew up with. So what do we need to make a really good chicken soup? Because these crepes are going to be floating in the chicken broth without all these vegetables. So we want to start with some chicken wings. I like to use chicken wings for broth because there's a lot of collagen in the wings. And it makes a really sturdy kind of broth and gives it really nice color. Plus the bone is really flavorful. But you could use chicken legs if you wanted to. You could just use a whole cut up chicken if you want to. Or if you want to do it like my Nona Golasso did, you have all these chicken wings. So you need about two pounds. It's about 20 chicken wings. And then we need some aromatic vegetables. Typical for that would be celery, carrots, lemon, a bouquet of herbs. So here we have flat leaf parsley, not curly parsley, a bay leaf. And the old trick was that you always used onions that were studded with whole cloves. It gave this a very nice flavor. And you left the skin on because the skin gave not only flavor, but it also gave color to the soup. So it's so easy to make 
a simple chicken broth that I don't know why people would even bother buying canned because you know canned or boxed has a lot of sodium in it. So to do this, we need a nice stock pot. So here's mine. And I'm going to put the vegetables in first. Here's my bouquet garni. The onions, that was just one whole onion. This is so simple. The carrots cut up in chunks. The lemons, did I mention lemons? Because that gives nice flavor too, that goes in. A bay leaf, whole bay leaf, and you want to leave it whole because if you broke it up, there's a chance that you, know, you could just kind of choke on that. And then of course we need the chicken. So for that we need gloves. So, if you're going to handle raw meat, you want to make sure that you are not spreading bacteria everywhere. So here are our beautiful looking, meaty looking wings. I know most people use wings just for barbecue, right? But we're going to use them for making this really great broth. So a soup like this is going to take 45 minutes to an hour. But what you don't want to do is boil the soup. That's the worst thing to do. So once you get your, all your ingredients in the pot, I'm going to take this glove off now, get rid of that. You want to give it some salt and pepper. So we want to give it some salt and pepper now, and then we'll give it some salt and pepper later. And I like coarse salt, so I've got my grinder on coarse. A little bit of salt. And we can always adjust this flavor later. And now we need to fill the pan with water to cover. So we're going to do that right here. And give this, just cover the ingredients, and we're going to bring this to a boil. But then we're going to lower this to barely a simmer. Because if we boil this, all the flavors are going to go up there. And they're not going to stay in the pot. So we don't want to do that. We want this to simmer so that the flavors will develop slowly and all that flavor stays in the pot, it doesn't escape in the air. So as soon as you have your pot ready to go and it's boiling, you want to really lower it to a simmer. Then it's going to take about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. But we're only going to use a clarified broth from this. We're not going to use the vegetables. So now we're going to let this go, put the lid on, bring it to a boil, and I'll check it. And then when I think it's ready, it's ready. But we've done one ahead of time for you. Beautifully cooked vegetables. Everything that we put in there, we're going to take out of the pot. So you want to take all of those vegetables. I'll either do this with a, a strainer or a slotted spoon. You want all those vegetables out. So you're straining all of this and using the meat and the vegetables for other things. All that goes in the bowl. So I think you get the idea. Then, once you have the vegetables all out, you want to put the broth through some cheesecloth. Just you, because for this recipe, you want a really clear broth. Something that looks like this. Look at this. Look at how nice and clear that is. And I'm actually going to give that just a little taste. It tastes really good. The celery, the carrot, you can taste it. It needs a little bit of salt, but I'm going to put that in at the end. But that's how clear you want it to be for this recipe. So we keep this warm, and actually you could make the broth a couple days ahead of time, even a week ahead of time. You could take out all the vegetables, use them, you could strain the broth, freeze it, and then use it whenever you want to. But for this particular recipe from Abruzzo, the Scripelle Nimbusse, we're going to be making crepes that go into this very light soup. So now we're going to make the crepes. To make the Crespelle, the Scripelle, as they say in Abruzzo, you're going to need a small pan, a non-stick pan. This is about eight inches. You could use a six-incher if you wanted, but I like this size. So you want to brush the pan with a little bit of butter, like that, because the first couple ones might stick on you. So you give it a little bit of Just swirl it, okay. like that. Just swirl it. Put it back on the flame. 
and you wait. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. So you just wait until this top part sets up. So that's gonna take about a minute or so. You'll see when it doesn't look shiny anymore, that's when you know you can take it out. Okay. So when you can move it in one unit like that, just like that, you can take it out and put it on a tray, just like this. And then you continue doing this until you have enough crepes. Now this, a batter like this is going to make 12 to 18 crepes or crespelle. So again, you put not even a quarter of a cup, swirl it like that, okay? cover the base of the pan. It's a little rumba action. Put it back on there and you wait. And you see these are very, very pliable. So they're going to, they're going to fold nicely. And as I say, this can be used for a savory or it can be used for a sweet. So again, wait till it sets up a bit and then you can take it out. This is a first course. Soup is always a first course. So we have our soup bowl all ready and two crepes in the broth is a serving. So let me show you how that goes. So here are the crepes. And what we wanna do is so simple. This is Pecorino Romano cheese. So this is a sheep's milk cheese, so it's got a little saltiness to it. And you simply take it and put it over the top of the crepe. There's, it's, it's so uh, country, so country cooking that it's, it's just so simple. And then you take it and you roll the crepe up like this, see? And you stick it in the base of the soup bowl. So there's one. Let's do another one. Again, this is Pecorino Romano, so think salt, you know, salt. So you don't want to oversalt the soup, but you want to give it a good grating of the Pecorino Romano. And you know, the story goes, every, every Italian recipe, so to speak, has a story. And the story about this one is that one day a chef was making some crepes, and he was, but he accidentally dropped some batter into a soup pot. And so he discovered a new way of serving the crepes. All right, so once we have them in the soup dish like that, then we can just ladle in that beautiful broth that we made. So here it is. I'm gonna put this up here now. Very, very clear. It goes right there. There is the soup, the brodo, and then we wanna give this some grated flat leaf, Italian parsley, and another hailstorm of the Pecorino Romano. And there you have it, scripelle imbuse, a really classic dish from Abruzzo. So if you've made a slew of crespelle, you can freeze them. So what I do is, after I make each one, I put them between pieces of wax paper like this, okay? And then I put them in a plastic bag and I freeze them and I can take out as many as I want. Now you can do a variety of things with these. If you wanted to do a dessert crisp belly, you would simply put whatever filling it is you wanted on it. Let's say it's whipped cream with fruits, blueberries, uh, blackberries sweetened whipped cream, you've spread it on there, and then you would fold this instead of doing uh, the rolled version and fold it again, so then you could see the beautiful filling, and then you would give it a little bit of powdered sugar, and you would have it as a dessert crepe. Some people like to take these and put them in soup, but they cheat. They don't use the way that we just did it, where we rolled up the crepe. Instead, they take it, and they just cut it into pieces. This is what the Italians call mal tagliati, which means badly cut. You're just cutting it up like that, and you could put this in soup, chicken soup. But if you want to do a version with vegetables, or let's say it's some sort of ground meat, again, you would do what I just did with the, with the uh, Abruzzese, Abruzzese style. You would put your filling on here, you would roll the crepe up like that and you would use it 
heated in the oven with maybe some cheese over the top. So that's three ways to use your leftover crust belle. So you have a lot of tomatoes at home, do you? Because you grew too many in your garden? Or maybe you just went overboard at the farmer's market. Well, I have an idea for you. And this was born in my kitchen, actually. You know, the Italians love marmalade. They, they use it in many, many ways for crostata, or they put it on pieces of crostini, in cookies. But how about we make a marmalade using tomatoes? Yes. So what I like to do is use cherry tomatoes, because they have less seeds, they cook down faster, that's all good. But if you wanted to use beefsteak, you could. If you wanted to use plum tomatoes, that would be fine too. So what you want to start with are really great tasting tomatoes, no matter what type you use. I have about six cups of, of cut cherry tomatoes. And I want to flavor this with, first of all, a shallot. That's a shallot. It's a member of the onion family, and it's very, very mild tasting. And I like the flavor of cloves in this marmalade. So I just take whole cloves and stud them in the shallot, see? Just get them in there. You need about, oh no, eight to 10 in a small shallot like this. And that you're going to put right in with the tomatoes. This is all gonna go in a pot and that's gonna be buried down in the tomatoes. And then we want a whole cinnamon stick. Yeah, that's going in. And then we want some grated ginger. You know, especially in Northern Italy, they use a lot of these types of spices. So we're gonna put the grated ginger in, fresh ginger. We want some sugar. For six cups, about a cup of sugar. We want lemon juice, just to help bump up the flavor. So about a quarter of a cup. That's about a quarter of a cup. And this I gave a lot of thought to, balsamic vinegar, yes. About two tablespoons. That's really gonna bump up that flavor. And a pinch of salt. So now you have all that in your bowl. And to make this marmalade requires you to be kind of around because these tomatoes have to cook down. They have to cook down until they're very, very thick. So once you have them all mixed like this, you just want to transfer them, transfer them to a pot. Okay? All goes in the pot, just like that. And I give that one quick stir. Make sure everything is all mixed together. And we're ready to cook this. I want to cook this on low heat for about an hour. All right, after all of those tomatoes are cooked down, believe it or not, this is what it looks like. Thick, like a marmalata. So the first thing you do is take out those cinnamon sticks. Get rid of that. You get rid of the shallot. And if you see any loose pieces of clove, you want to get rid of that. So I could just eat this out of the bowl just like this, but I'm going to show you some different ways to have it. First of all, I'm going to taste it because I want to know how perfect this is. It's sweet and sour at the same time. So it's perfect for a number of things. And the first thing I would do with this is have it with cheese. So here we have a nice looking cheese board with different kinds of cheeses. Now I think it's best with softer cheeses. So here we have a gorgonzola dolce. This is cheese that comes from gorgonzola in the region of Lombardia in the north of Italy. So it's a blue cheese. So we can take a little piece of that and put it on our plate right there. And then this is something called bel paese. I'm just gonna take one wedge of that, put it there. And this is a very soft cheese, again from Northern Italy. This is a taleggio. 
and I'm going to take a piece of that and put it right there. And then you would simply take some of this delicious tomato marmalade and put it right there. And you could serve it with a nice slice of crostini. Wouldn't that make a nice start to a, a meal? Absolutely delicious. And the marmalade goes with all of those cheeses. So that's number one. Number two, still thinking. How about you serve it as a dessert? So here we have fresh ricotta cheese. If you want to learn how to make ricotta cheese, you can go on my website, ciaoitalia.com, show you how to make this. It's so simple. So we're going to put it right there. And when you make it, you can make it in these little cheese baskets. It's so easy. And it just kind of makes a nice, little, a nice little presentation. And then you can take some of that marmalade again and just put it right over the top, see, like that. And that makes a really delicious dessert, and it's pretty. And then, if you're feeling really, really generous, why don't you put it in a jar? Give it to somebody as a gift. And if you make batches and batches of this, just fill up a bunch of jars and put them in the freezer. And then you'll have them for whenever you need them. And yes, you can freeze in glass jars. So there you have it. How to make marmalade out of tomatoes. Today, we made some classic recipes, and one of them is this, called scripelle imbuse, and it's a recipe from Abruzzo. We started with a beautiful broth, a chicken broth, that was made with aromatic vegetables. We used chicken wings. We cooked the soup very, very slowly, and then we strained out all of the vegetables so that we had just this clear broth, and then, we made those crepes. Remember, that was just flour and water and eggs. We made a thin batter, like a pancake batter. And then, when it was cooked, we filled it with pecorino cheese. And here it is, all ready to eat. That's a first course. And then I started thinking about my garden and all those tomatoes. And so we decided to make marmalata di pomodoro, or a marmalade made with tomatoes. And here it is in a variety of ways. Remember we started with those tomatoes and we added some ginger, some cinnamon, some sugar, some balsamic vinegar, some lemon juice. Cooked it down until it was really thick. Looks like a jam. And then you could serve it over a crostini. You could have it as a dessert for ricotta cheese. You could have it as a pairing with cheeses, like the ones that we have here. And also, you can give it as a gift. So there you have it. And until I see you in Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao. I imagine that this is a really old antique polenta pop. Just look at the rivets here. These are copper, I'm thinking. Oh my God, the whole thing is copper. You need a big stick and you've got to stir the cornmeal a long time until it becomes polenta and then it starts to leave the sides of the pan and then you dump it out. I don't know how you would dump this out though. This would really be difficult. But it's nice to see these antique uh, utensils and I think that's a very good example of what one would have looked like.